In this session, we shall discuss the quite important and very useful G Rangers class from the package called Genomic Rangers. Let's load it. A G Rangers is constructed using the G Rangers constructor, and essentially, it's very similar to an I Rangers with some additional bookkeeping having to do with a chromosome and strand. Chromosomes in uh, G ranges are called seek names. Let's say yes, we have a strand plus comma minus comma plus and then the ranges we say I ranges start So it prints, uh, and we can see we have three ranges here uh, on two different strands and on a single chromosome. Strands in G ranges can have three different values. They can be plus or minus, which are the forward and the reverse strand, and then they can be star, which indicates uh, either that the strand is unknown or that it's a, an entity that's present on both strands. A lot of the things we have learned about about I ranges carry over directly to G ranges. We just have the additional bookkeeping of the chromosome and the strand. But there's a couple of new um, uh, operations that has to do with the fact that uh, things now have a direction because of the strand. We can do things uh, such as uh, get the flanking sequence on the uh, on the uh, on the uh, G range, and uh, you can see here that the um, um, the flanking sequence is um, um, is relative to the direction of transcription. So something happens on the positive strand where we go to the left, uh, whereas on the uh, negative strand we go to the right. There's other uh, things such as uh, promoters uh, and a couple of other a couple of other straightforward uh, uh, things. A promoter is in bioconductor usage. The default promoter thing is a two thousand two hundred kb uh, two thousand two hundred basis interval, where you have 200 bases uh, downstream and 2,000 bases upstream of the transcription start site. At G ranges, since it has chromosomes, operate within a universe that is uh, given by something called seek info or sequence info. Right now, we haven't given it a lot of information. It knows that there's a chromosome 1. It doesn't know how long it is. It doesn't know whether it's circular and what genome it is. So we can, for example, give it a length, which is uh, 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 quite useful. So we're going to say chromosome 1. It has a length of 10. And uh, let's see it got uh, recorded there. We can see the different uh, chromosome names, which are given by sequence levels. And now that we have a, 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 an end of the chromosome, we can talk about doing operations that are uh, relative to the, to the entire chromosome. A, an example is GAPS. GAPS is a function that basically gives us all the stuff on the chromosome that is not covered by uh, ranges and the G ranges. So here we get uh, one surprising thing. The first thing is you can see that the star strand is treated differently from the positive and the minor strand. There were no ranges originally on the star strand, so therefore when we take the gap, we get the entire star strand back. Furthermore, you can see that uh, uh, all of the ranges end at 10. 
because that's the end of the chromosome, so we know, yeah, that's where it stops. Let's try to expand this with uh, a, new, uh, uh, a new chromosome. It seems straightforward that you should be able to do something like seed names of GR to be uh, equal to chromosome 1, comma, chromosome 2, comma, chromosome 1. But we get an error. And the reason we get an error is that it has recorded that there's a single chromosome in this organism, or in this hypothetical organism. So we need to start off by either reconstructing the object, or we need to tell it that, hey, there's actually two different levels. And now when it knows that the seek levels can take two different values, we can assign a new uh, vector of, of, uh, of seek values. So now we have two different chromosomes here. Often we sort uh, G ranges and the sorting order is, uh, seems to be sensible here, but it's actually relative to the ordering of the seek levels. So here we have seek levels that are chromosome one and chromosome two. Let's uh, reverse that. So we are essentially saying that chromosome two comes before chromosome one. Uh, and then we're going to sort uh, the G range again. And now we see chromosome 2 is the first uh, range that comes out. This is especially useful if you want to sort things with chromosome 1 and chromosome 10 in sort of standard computer uh, sorting. Uh, chromosome 10 would happen before chromosome 2. We can also assign a genome to these different things. So let's try to do that. Let's say that the genome of uh, this G range is a uh, uh, some string, but let's say HG19, and uh, we print it. Uh, we can see it all comes from HG19. It actually turns out, if you look at the seek info slot, that every single chromosome can have its own genome. That seems very esoteric, but that happens because, say, we are sequencing a pool of organisms, or say we are spiking in external DNA into our sequencing experiment, this external DNA sometimes comes as part of sort of quality control uh, or spike in controls. These external pieces of DNA may come from different organisms. So it's a little esoteric, but it's possible that each uh, sequence comes from its own genome. The typical thing is that they would all come from the same genome though. So why is this nice? Well, this is uh, very nice to label your G-ranges with genome because it gives you a certain kind of protection. We are all used to dealing with data from different genome builds. And that's, a, I would argue, a, probably a frequent source of errors in, in computational biology. Um, but here there's some built-in stuff. So let's take, a, let's make a copy of, a, of, a, of a, the G ranges and say that this new copy is a, actually a, on um, HG18. Now let's do something like a find overlaps that we haven't really discussed fully. We will do that in a different session, but it works in the same way as the I ranges. And if we do that, we get uh, basically an error out saying that, hey, we are trying to do a find overlap between two G ranges and they are, incompa in, they are incompatible genomes. That's a really, really nice safety feature that I would encourage people to make use of. 